Wimbledon weather held good until the final, and Hot Sunshine beat down on Fred Perry, British holder of the singles title, and Gottfried von Kram of Germany. In this game, Perry, nearest the camera, showed himself the complete master. Unfortunately, he served incredible today and, um, you know, played, well, I'm sure if you, if you ask him, played a, played a very, very good match and, um, yeah, just played that little bit better than me on, on the big points and, and served, served great the whole way through. So, yeah, it's going to be a tough guy to beat when he's playing like that. Is Andy Murray going to win Wimbledon? I think it's very unlikely that he will win Wimbledon uh, because there are always a couple of players who are better than him. I don't think there's any shame in not winning Wimbledon. It's a very difficult tournament to win. Murray really hasn't had a great season since getting to the semi-finals of the Australian Open where he played some of the fantastic tennis. He lost to Djokovic in five sets, played great, was attacking, the mentality was good. But then since then, he hasn't really done so much. He got to the finals of Miami, but he had two defaults, one against Raonic and one against Nadal to make that finals. He has just been struggling for rhythm and consistency throughout the year. And meanwhile, his rivals, uh, principally Djokovic, uh, Nadal and uh, Federer, don't appear to have dropped their levels much. Let's be realistic, okay? You've got three guys ahead of Murray right now. Federer's won 16 majors and six Wimbledons. You've got Djokovic, who's won Wimbledon, uh, one occasion, five majors. You've got Nadal, who's won 11 majors now and two Wimbledon titles. So, you know, you're talking about three guys who probably can go down to history. One is the greatest, one who's trying to catch Federer's record right now, and Djokovic, who's trying to establish himself in those, that blend. There's only ever one player that's any good. People fixate on him because they don't know of any other British tennis players because they're all outside the top 100 in the world and most of them get knocked out of the tournament after the second or third day. Once Wimbledon starts, he's still the main focus for most of the crowds and for most of the, the media around it. Um, but, it, you know, he's, and Andy Murray isn't a rookie anymore. Andy Murray's been number two in the world. Um, he's won many Masters series. He's been the best British player in the Open era. Do you think he's got what it takes? Of course. Oh, of course. <laughs> he's British. Yeah. You're not doubting his yes, ability, And he's a Scot, so he's got something extra. They have a little bit of fighting spirit. They've always had to fight their corner, all the Scots, haven't they? Although the absolute palaver that would ensue if he did win it would be borderline unbearable from all you know these jingoistic Middle Englanders who, who swarm to Wimbledon once a year. And, uh, but I suppose it will wear off after a while. Our modern British birthright, patient cures and valiant losers. So can Mr Murray handle the pressure which is surely coming his way? I'd say it probably bothers him that there's this perception that he isn't any good when he quite clearly is very good. But I wouldn't imagine he loses too much sleep over it. I mean, Andy Murray has said in the past that his favourite tournament is the US Open. And I can kind of understand why it might not be Wimbledon because the amount of nonsense he has to put up with every year um, is, it must be very annoying. I think Andy's starting to feel more pressure with the hype of Wimbledon coming around, so he's trying to deflect it in the best manner he knows possible. Because if he comes out and says, yeah, the one I want to win is Wimbledon, all of a sudden he puts this immense pressure on himself. There's very little doubt in my mind that all, th all things been equal. Either Nadal, Federer or Djokovic would have beaten probably McEnroe uh, at close to his best under equal conditions, the same for Borg. You know, they, these are exceptional, exceptional players, and it's Murray's bad luck to have come along at the same time with them. <laughs> Personal favourite. Well, um, out of the players left, it's hard to pick against the number one player in the world. Um, I would like to see Murray win because I think that would be great uh, for tennis. Of course, he's going to say that on British TV when he's, you know, sort of singing for his supper. Uh, but I, he probably goes on to the into the American commentary booth to do his shift um, shift in there and and says something completely different. You know, of course he hasn't a hope of, of winning Wimbledon, no chance. But I I had to say it to those other bozos in the next door booth. You know, but uh, you know, maybe he'll win. It's unlikely, but uh, who knows? You had Tim Henman getting the semis many times. I think four occasions. I got the quarterfinals. Um, I just think it's because it hasn't happened in so long. 
But you know, Murray's a different blend compared to those. He's probably the most talented guy out of a lot of us.